Welcome back to another episode of the Very Serious Business Podcast. The show that explores the old ways of making money are the only ways. Today, we'll speak with Humperdinck Elderman, a man whose motto is, if you're happy in your field of work, then you're obviously not working hard enough. Hold up. Humperdinck? Seriously? Hmm... I don't think so. Welcome to 2018, people, the year where we strive to thrive each and every day, and don't use words like humperdink. Want to know how you can get started? You need to listen to the amazing episodes that Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond has to offer. Want to jumpstart your business? Thrive Loud. Looking to be inspired? Thrive Loud. Want to work smart and not hard? Thrive Loud. Drop kick the old stuffy way of doing things and get out there and change the world. Listen to Lou Diamond as he brings you the smartest leaders and most dynamic guests with the most energizing messages. Listen to Thrive Loud and you and your business will start thriving too. This Thrive Loud episode is brought to you by Hinge Consulting. Success on Amazon hinges on well-executed strategies. Contact Hinge Consulting to learn about total Amazon channel management and to see if your business has what it takes to grow over 300% over the next 12 months. That's Hinge Consulting at hingeconsulting.co. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. Today on Thrive Loud, we bring you dating expert and romantic fairy godmama, two very smart, successful women all around the world. She is known for magically ushering in stable, fun, witty, and insanely attractive men who will love, adore, and romance you without expecting you to compromise your career success or genuine self for any of it. She is just an awesome person, and we are excited to have her on to share all of her juicy, sexy secrets with us. This is going to be a very interesting Thrive Loud episode, my fellow listeners. Coming from Romantic Fairy Godmamaville, Thrive Loud listeners, Jen Burton. Jen, how are you today? Lou, I'm doing very well, and thank you for having me, by the way. It is truly an honor and a pleasure. We have all different types of guests on the show. We have people that cover the realm from entrepreneurial, very serious businesses to coaches and life coaches and and inspirational leaders and thought leaders. And this is a little bit of a change that we're going to have here in this type of conversation. What I would love to know, and I know our listeners would love to know, is a little bit about you, how you got into what you're doing now and this type of messaging you have before we start understanding some of the key secrets on how you're able to help all these uh, former, I guess, dysfunctional relationships and crappy dating experience and transforming them into great ones. So is it fair for you to give us a little bit of background to bring us up to speed and then uh, we'll take it from there? It's absolutely fair. So if we go way back to pre-2006, I was the woman who did everything wrong that you could possibly do (laughs) in relationships and dating. I really should have been the poster child for how to lose a man in 10 days. I I was really good at it. And if a man managed to get past those initial 10 days and I didn't freak him the heck out, it was within six months I had turned that relationship dysfunctional. Just to help give give some examples of some of the dysfunctional things that you did early on that you know were the wrong things, throw them out there just so we have some ideas. Well, um, the incessant texting, the asking all the time, are you okay? Are you mad at me? Are you upset with me? When absolutely nothing was going on, the planning out the wedding, the future, everything else in my head on the second date. Um, (laughs) I really, Lou, the list goes on and on and on. And um, those are just actually probably some of the mild ones. So um, my favorite one, though, I think was the last obsession that I had because I was really, really good at obsessing over a man. And the last obsession, I, I actually ended up signing up for a four thousand dollar course because of the fact I was so obsessed with this man and I was trying to figure out how to get him back in my life. Wow. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. All right. Continue on the on the on the upward slope from uh, from being at the, at the doing everything wrong to moving towards starting to figure out how to do things right. Well, 
It actually happened. I did manage to get married and we spent three lovely years um, constantly fighting in marriage counseling, doing just everything together that you could to rip each other apart and bring each other down. So I finally decided that I wanted to move to another city so we could have a trial separation. During that time, I started studying women's sensuality and um, femininity, things that I just thought I knew naturally. And I realized I was pretty darn clueless about all that. So during this time, we're doing our separation. Our third year anniversary rolls around and he comes to visit to see if we can rekindle things. And we are having um, an encounter of the sexual type. Okay. And I realized that this entire relationship had been constructed around him and his desires and everything he wanted. And he didn't really have a chance to ever contribute to my happiness. At that point, I, in very dramatic fashion, that actually that evening, at that point, that evening, I fell to my knees and said, this obviously isn't what love is supposed to be. So what do I do? And I'm talking to my higher power. What is it you want me to do? Three days later, I had a man start talking to me while I was out one evening. And this is not something that happened to me very often. But he looks at me and he said, and this is actually something that didn't happen at all. He goes, may I take you out on a real date? And that triggered something inside of me. And I realized that no man had ever actually asked me out on a real date. And we started this whirlwind romance and I mustered up the courage to finally ask my husband for a divorce. And that guy disappeared. Hmm. So everything happening together, as I, I ended up paying for a $4,000 course <laughs> <laughs> to try to win this man back. And what ended up happening instead was I had a really lov- lovely woman inside of this course who said, you know what? I'm done with your obsession. She took me under her wing. We're going to start online dating and we're going to cure you of your obsession and you're going to move on. And of course, secretly, I was like, okay, I'll do it. But let, let's just be honest, this this guy and I, we were meant to be together. I've never felt this way before in my entire life. So little by little, as I started studying everything I could find about da- out about dating and she was she was uh, being a really great support system for me, I started going, I uh, started, I put up an online dating profile and I started going on dates and then I started letting men treat me differently than I had ever been treated before. Okay. So so, yeah, I want to hear these examples here for for the listeners out here who are single and or looking to figure out how to treat women differently. Help provide a a, a game plan of what was different. Well, when you look at it at first, it seems very, very simple. So instead of me doing all of the active pursuing which I don't want that to be confused and say that women should never contact men. I would let men do the majority of the contacting. I also threw out the notion, which we women do very, very often, of that as soon as I meet a guy and we have a connection in chemistry, that all of a sudden my exclusive focus goes on him before he's even decided whether or not Um, He wants to date me exclusively. So I threw that out. I knew at this point that I was going to date multiple men and have um, the interactions and situations that I wanted to have without committing myself to be in an exclusive relationship, even in my head, like I had done so many times before. And it worked so beautifully. The next thing I knew, I had all of these really amazing men who were stepping, just crawling out of the woodwork to be with me, to do things for me, to date me, to court me, to, you know, just really take care of me in many ways. And it's not that I needed it, but I realized that men, they want to make you happy on so many levels, but we women aren't really giving them that opportunity. We say we are, but we're not. We're setting them up for failure in so many different ways. And then on top of that, um, I actually started to feel really heard by men, seen by men, instead of instead of being the active pursuer in all these in different relationships, I was able to lean back to allow things to organically open up and then give my input when I really wanted to give my input. And again, let me go back to that happiness factor. What I realized more than anything is that we women, even though we say we, we give men the opportunity to make us happy, men can't make us happy. They want to make us happy. They can't make us happy. They can contribute to our happiness, but ultimately 
we have to step up as women and make ourselves happy first and then create a space for men to come in. Okay. So I'm going to jump in here because um, yeah. obviously I am I wrote a book called Master the Art of Connecting. And many times people have utilized the way that I connect with individuals, whether it's on a, in a romantic situation or it's even a business relationship. There's a certain way that you need to be to be able to connect with another individual. And I have a whole connecting core, which we go through, um, which I'm not going to go through on this piece of it. But one of the components has a lot to do with being authentically who you are, and that instills a lot of confidence. And my question to you is, do you believe that I, I've always felt that when things start working, it almost feels like, you know, like it's the ebb and flow type thing. When things are on a roll, it feels like nothing, like you said, men were coming out of the woodwork. People were wanting to connect to you. I would argue that at that particular moment, you were flexing all of your connecting core muscles, all the things that people wanted to do to be around you. And that actually is drawing people in. So my question to you is, do you believe that it was the way that you were acting in those situations or was it the way that you were being perceived by others? I actually believe it's who I started to see myself as. Okay. Um, which if you, I mean, if we talk about language and framework, we can, we can, you know, alter it to whatever way works in our head the best. But essentially what I did was I stepped into the role of the woman that I really wanted to be. And I tried out and experimented with, um, different methodologies, different ways of being. I threw out, I looked at all my patterns before that didn't work for me because this is really important. Women are not across the board the same. My patterns are different than the next woman's pattern. And so she has to establish what her patterns were and then do something differently and start tweaking them. It might be a two millimeter tweak as Tony Robbins likes to say, or it might be a a complete drastic 180 where um, you have to throw out everything that's been happening. So I'm going to say it is the person who I started seeing myself as. It is also, then you take, take the next step of that. It's also the value that I was creating around myself and, and men, the, they started perceiving me differently than I had before. I had men even from my past that started stepping up and saying, I, I, what has changed about you? I don't know exactly what it is. So I think it is a combination of, the, of, of most of all of that. But really, to me, the principal part of it is who I started seeing myself as. Okay. I like it. And it's a sense of owning, it's owning who your authentic self is and being able to, to be that. And that's, and by the way, recognizing that it does take two, as I always like to say, it can't just be one, one sided straight, right? At the end of the day, um, there has to be some give and take from the other side. Relationships can't just all be a one sided street. There has to be somebody willing to be empathetic and understand what you're going through and vice versa for it to really work. Um, so on the same sense, right, you know, also you can be much more attractive and being drawing in lots of different people, but the one that you feel connects with is also the one that is drawn to you as well. And from your experience, and this is what I'd like to know, how did you transpose this experience of yours into becoming the romantic fairy godmama? Well, this actually, this whole experience happened upon me. So I was very, very active in my dating life within the group that I was talking about that course I was taking, there was a large community of women. A lot of the women started coming to me asking me how I was doing all this. And so I started consulting without even realizing, realizing I was consulting for a, for a couple of years around 2010, I was talking to a woman about all this and she looks at me and she says, can I pay you to teach me this? And I looked at her and I said, Hmm, sure. Why not? I like money. I like talking about this. Let's see if these two go together well. And then the next thing I knew, she was helping me put together a small in-person class. And all I did was tell my story. And we were at a meet and greet. And the first meet and greet that I had for, for this specific class, I had 15 women at this meet and greet. Just by telling my story, I didn't, I didn't know how to pitch. I didn't know how to do anything. Just told my story. I had 13 of the 15 women sign up for my first class. Oh, wow. Yes. So, so now you've, you've started doing classes um, and you've been doing this since 2010, you, you said? Uh, unofficially since 2010, 2012 officially. Okay. 
And what does this look like today? And what component of your life? And 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 are you how often are these classes happening? And what are the ways that you work with helping other women in this regard? Currently, I, I no longer do in person classes. Okay. I do have several self study classes. I have three self study classes on my site at havehimyourway dot com. I also do right now. I'm hosting it about once a year a group class. It's online and it has a live component to it, which is it's very popular for women who can join me from around the world. So that's happening in about uh, about once a year. And I'm doing off and on pri- private consulting, but it's not near as much as what I'm doing with the other pieces. Okay. Now I'll ask some fun personal questions. Are, are you still dating actively or what, what is your current dating situation? My current date, I'm dating my husband and we've been, <laughs> there we go. We've been together for over 11 years. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is, so now from all of this, this, I got it. This, now I've connected all the dots here. Um, was this the guy that you spent the $4,000 to go find or the original? <laughs> no, it wasn't. He was my upgrade. Right. And um, he was actually, he was kind of a hot mess when I first met him too. And I knew I had something really powerful because he, we, I think we met each other. I think I was 31 and he was 30 at the time. And he was such a hot mess when I had met him. He had never had a girlfriend for longer than three months, never told a woman he had loved her or that he loved her. He never had taken a woman home to meet his parents, never, never even given a woman a gift. And within seven months of dating, he was asking me to marry him, to move in with him, to have his child, to it. And I knew something very, very powerful was happening. And, and this was all just by doing what I was doing and allowing myself. I was dating multiple men and eventually we did make it to exclusivity, but I was really, I was really figuring out who I was and enjoying the heck out of me. So in finding out who you are and now you know, years later of not personally dating, but obviously giving that advice. And by the way, this is incredible advice, not just on how you need to be to go find it, um, a, a partner in life. This is great advice on how you should be every day to understand exactly who you are, because I truly believe that that's what we're all attracted to is that inner, inner self of yourself and bringing it out. So mm-hmm. over the years you've been married, obviously not being much in the dating scene, is that how have you, how have you helped to keep fresh and, and sharp on a lot of these tactics? Because even today, the way that dating works is a little, you know, there's different sites, there's lots of phones, there's swiping right, swiping left, all these different <laughs> things that maybe you have to keep in contact with. How do you stay in touch with that world, not being in the dating world? Actually, it's quite simple because the dating methodology that I teach really really taps into what a woman wants. So for instance, um, and it's not across the board. So let's say I meet a woman and she, and she goes, I've had the worst luck on Tinder. And I, and she goes, I hate online dating. Well, I help her rework everything. So it's not about specific tactics. It's never about specific tactics. I have to, I have to help her uncover what's actually going on. And most of the time is that that dating world moves too fast for her. So I teach her how to communicate with a man, with men, not a man, (laughs) but with men in a way that men are very receptive to. And so that she starts feeling seen and heard by him. And then they can start exploring the fun potential between the two of them instead of making this such a do or die situation. Oh, I'm never going to meet anyone. I'm never. And I show her that men are actually really quite easy to navigate. We've put a lot of emphasis on men and made them the, the villains in this situation. But the more challenging part is navigating ourselves. By the way, we are easy to navigate. You guys are the complicated ones is what I would say. No, I'm, <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. You know what, Lou? I 100% agree with you. I, I really do. I thought that, and I love women. I, I can't remember. The, the, there's a famous speaker who talks about the, the, the brain of a man and the brain of a woman and how men think and how women think. And it, it's brilliant. And a lot of it has to do with the men are very compartmentalized. Like everything is in boxes in your brain. And you take out one box, but you will not talk about anything else. But women, everything is burned on emotion. And he talks about how the brain is constantly thinking about this and that and that. And that's, by the way, it, it might be a stereotypical way of describing it, but it is very true in the way that certain things um, make, make it, you know, make it difficult. And I guess this is an interesting point. There must have been a point in your life when uh, you recognize, you, like it's, you were making this, this desperate piece when you're talking early on and you recognize this transition about looking into yourself. How long 
did that process for you take from spending the $4,000 to making that transition? What was in working with that woman who helped you? What was that time frame or what was the aha moment or if there was there one? I think that I have continuous aha moments. We're constantly evolving. Now, if we're talking about sp- specifically by the time I started that process to, to I met my husband, um, it was about three or four months. And then it was about seven months before we became pro- who we are more of now, but we keep evolving as this time goes. It actually can happen very quickly, this process, when you tap into you because men are going to be extraordinarily attracted to you and you need to know how to manage the other side of it, which is what I think most women are actually more scared of than rejection is how to manage all the attention from men and what that really means and what that looks like and do it in a way that doesn't feel overwhelming and make you want to actually shut down. But the time frame, it I've, I've had women that it takes a little bit longer because she's moving through different pieces of her resistance or to, it can happen within a a couple of months. I like it when it takes a little longer to unfold because I feel like the change is more permanent. Gotcha. So I love to ask this question of all the Thrive Loud guests, Jen, and I'm curious here because um, today, where we are today, not from before, but when you've had off days or, or things aren't going the way that you want, whether it's in business or in life, when you have trouble thriving, who or what do you turn to to get back on the thriving track? Thriving is such a great place of flow. And there are so many different tools that people can use. I personally, within within the groups that within the, the groups that I have created with women, we have tools to help process all those different emotions so that we're not punishing everybody around us with our emotions and to help us let go of things that aren't serving us. So those are some of the tools that I go to right away. I also have a a very close girlfriend where we can process things together. I also know that movement, even though we don't think about this too much as women, I know men think about this more, movement is fantastic for helping process things and getting things out and sweating and and just um, diving into it. But the better you take care of yourself in those moments where you just really don't freaking feel like it, the more you are going to start to thrive and that the threshold is going to... um, get smaller for the time frame that you have to stay there. Jen, let's let's take the time now. Give all the plugs on where people can find you. And then I want to then segue that on all the little logistics. And we'll provide all the links and show notes and all that stuff as well to where you where you want to take the business from where it is today and what's your, what's your big goal for where you want to go to. So give all the plugs first and then lead into where where you're looking to take it next. Well, you can find me, your women specifically can find me at havehimyourway.com. Oh, boy. Forward slash diamond. <laughs> yes. Spectacular. Anyway, yes. Keep going. Yes. But don't forget the forward slash diamond because I'm putting something together uh, special for your listeners. Well, why don't we make it uh, Just, forward slash thrive loud? Is, if that's okay. Or no? Or done? You tell me. That makes okay. it easier. Just a little find it. Perfect. <laughs> Thrive Loud, yes. And so it's havehimyourway.com forward slash Thrive Loud. And that's where they, they can find me. I'll put something together special for them, for them to enjoy a, a great free resource so that they can start stepping into who they want to be with men. Cool. Excellent. Um, where are you looking to take the business from here? What's your big goal that you're looking for, for making your you're being the romantic fairy godmama, which I love the way you spell godmama. Just it's awesome. Uh, where are you looking for that next step? What's some big goals for you personally? It's global domination, <laughs> total global domination. <laughs> um, we are growing in in great ways. I I've branched out into my podcast, and I know you know this. And our podcast, Success for Single Smart Female, has been absolutely amazing, and we are well on our way to being the best single source for single women around the world, what they need, how they want to love, who they want to be in life. So that's my ultimate is to be that, that very comprehensive resource for single women. So now, Jen, I was going to ask this question to you um, earlier on, but I wanted it. It was a good way to to link into it. Uh, As both of us being podcast hosts, what has been one of the most 
enlightening experiences of being a host on your show. Because a lot of times I like I sit in this this seat or or stand sometimes um, and behind the side of the microphone and I, and I hear stuff that is always amazing and learn from every single guest we have on the show, something pretty powerful. What has that been for you or one that stands out of late um, on your show? Well, we don't have a lot of guests on our show, but I will say what has been really powerful is how much misinformation there is about men and dating out there and connecting with women and giving them the tools and the right encouragement and the right navigation for what they're doing and helping them go from feeling inept to powerful and hearing the stories and the responses to that has been so fulfilling. There's nothing better than getting getting the firsthand accounts from women of what this information does for their life and their love life. That's great. Jen Barton, your all-time favorite movie. All-time favorite movie. Well, I have several, but I'm going to go with this one just for the context of conversation. I am a huge fan of courtesans. And if you don't know what that is, you should definitely look it up. My fav- favorite French courtesan is actually Ninon de l'Enclos. But there's a great movie out there called Dangerous Beauty, which talks about the life of a French, of another, not a French, but an Italian courtesan, Veronica, De, uh, Ro- Veronica Franco. And I think that you, a lot of your women would really enjoy that. Wow. that I movie. like it. And by the way, anytime somebody brings a movie that nobody has mentioned before on the show, I'm always enlightened by it. So we will make sure to even highlight that as well, which has been great. Do I get a prize? You could though? get a prize. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll create the website for it and uh, we'll figure out what that prize is and I'll give you the link. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Jen Burton, truly a pleasure. This was uh, great to have you here. And I guess I'll let you come up with the last comment here. Um, give one last message to to the listeners out there, uh, words of advice or things that you want to share with our listeners. One last takeaway that they can learn from you. I want to direct this to your female listeners because this is really important. We were talking about how complicated women are, but what we didn't really get into and something that's very important to women for women to know is that as complicated as you are, you are the true powerhouse behind romance. So connecting to who you really are is going to trigger a ripple effect in your love life that you never even imagined. Jen Burton, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been great. Thank you. And to all the Thrive Out listeners out there, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com.